going to make a different version of the stud earring organizer. Instead of using a picture frame like I do in a lot of my crafts for organization, um, we are going to reuse a piece of scrap wood. Start with this piece of scrap wood here. This one actually has a little bit of a wave to it. And um, so we're going to put the hooks on the bottom here. And then I have this piece of cork and it's half inch thick. So it's plenty of room to stick those stud earrings in there and not poke the wood behind it. Um, if it does, not a big deal, but um, it's a pretty good amount of space. And so I have a piece that I've already painted that I'm going to give to somebody um, just to bless their day. But to show you how this works, I'm going to start out with this piece of wood here. And with my quilting ruler. It's one of my favorite tools because it keeps everything straight. And I can see through it. And so I am going to, hopefully you can see all this. I'm going to line this up. And this is the back. So I always like to go and dent a quarter of an inch from the back. And this is exactly 18 inches long. Well, no, it's a little bit less. Um, so we're going to split that difference and center it up. Okay, so we're going to make a T every inch to mark where to put our hooks. And this will have plenty of hooks. Okay. And it has a pretty little detail. Um, I believe you can find this detail at Home Depot. Um, they have these in longer pieces than what this is. And um, if you go there, they will actually cut the wood for you. So if you do not like saws, don't want to deal with that, or don't have one, don't have a saw, go to Home Depot, find the wood you want, and... Um, you can ask them to cut it, tell how long you want it, and they will do it. And that's for free. So I call that a good deal. If you don't like to do that, don't like to use a saw. Okay, so we are going to start by marking. We're going to put our needle nose pliers with a, a nail. This is a linoleum nail. Um, just what I like to use because it's nice and short and it's a little fatter. It's just, but you can use any nail you want. I'm going to put that right on the T. Give it a couple taps. And this is to help so my drill bit does not slip. Okay. I would say this is one of the most important parts. Because if you mess up on the tapping, your drilling will be messed up. And then your hooks will be messed up. So, if you're going to pay attention or take it slow on anything, it would be the tapping. We have our drill, and I believe this is a 332nd bit. If you're not sure what bit to get, no. Um, you can take your hook. This is a 7 8 inch white cup hook. Um, I have used up to 1 inch cup hooks, and they work just fine. And if you look at it and the bit is about the same size or slightly smaller, um, that will work. Okay, so we're going to flip this up and we're going to drill away. And so that drill bit is going to set right in that hole. And so there it doesn't slip. Okay, so I finally got down the line. As you can see, I did all of the holes. Okay, so there we go. Now, um, this particular wood is stained. If we want to leave it that way, we totally could. I think I'm going to paint this. And um, then I can install hooks and put the cork on. But in the meantime, I have this lovely piece of wood. It's actually a scrap piece. <laughs> It's pretty beat up, but um, we're going for a rustic look here. 
And so um, I have already done the holes. So we have our cup hooks here. And this is the particular brand. I have also used Hillman, I believe. Um, these are Bulldog cup hooks and they work just fine. There's usually eight in a package. Sometimes you can buy them in bulk, but even when I buy them in bulk, they still tend to come in these little packages. So, here we go. Now we'll set the cork aside for the moment. And you, you can maybe see right there, that closer. I have made little markings to center up where I want my cork to sit. You can choose to put it in the middle or I chose to put it up a little bit higher so that in case you have one of those um, stud earrings that dangles a little bit, then you have plenty of space without running into your necklaces. So I am just screwing these in. And we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven left to go. So we're almost done. And this is the last hook. Okay, so we made it, got that in there, got all the hooks, looks pretty straight. Mm, there's a few I could mess with, perhaps. Not bad. Okay, so on the back, I have already, um, I marked and I tapped. And I pre-drilled my holes for my hangers. I use these socket hangers. I bought them off of Amazon. I can put the link in the description, but they look like this. Um, I think they come in black and gold. And these are the black ones. And then I keep all of my screws in this handy dandy little container. And so we're gonna need four screws because we have four holes. And I'll put that back. Okay, so we need our drill back and we have to remove the bit because we're not drilling anymore. We're gonna screw those in since they've already been pre-drilled. And this is a um, Phillips head and I'm not seeing the number on here. It's either a P1 or a P2. Usually they have the number on the side. I imagine I've used this so much that it has rubbed off. <laughs> so, all right, that's good. All right, so we have a hook or a hanger and kind of place that there. Oopsie. And then we have the screw, put it in the bit. And put it in there. Maybe pray a little bit. Make sure it works. <laughs> There's one. Ta-da! Okay. So we have the back here. We're done with that part. Except for, I have a little trick that I like to do. And I have these, these are three quarter inch beige felt pads. Um, you might see these in the store, like in Walmart is where I got these. And they usually, you put them under chairs or under lamps or things so they don't scratch your furniture or scratch your, your wood floors if that's what you have. Um, they have a little sticky back, so I, I peeled that off. And now these are fabulous because <laughs> if you put this on the wall, just like this, then it's going to tip because this sticks out more than what this does. I don't know if you saw that. This hanger sticks out just a little bit, maybe a quarter of an inch. But for me, I don't like that <laughs> because then when you hang it on the wall, I don't know if you can see that, it would tip just a little bit. And I just don't think that looks that nice. So let's take care of that. 
I have, oops, sorry, I hit the camera. Put a felt pad there, and we'll put one in each corner. Um, you could just put them on the bottom, and it'd be okay. I usually put them all in each corner just so that it looks nice. There's no scratches to the wall, and it should be fine. And when you do this, when it's all nice and level, you can even set things on the top. If you get a wide enough piece of wood, it's like a mini shelf. Okay, so we have two there, two there, and this is just a basic. You could stop here if you didn't want to do the cork, and that would be fine. Or you could draw a design like I have done with some of my projects. Okay, so we want this to be rustic. I have a sanding block. It's got some paint on it from things I've sanded off. I did a red one and a teal one and a white one. As you can see my colors. Okay, so we take the sanding block. I believe this is a fine sanding block, not a coarse one. So, because we're not looking to take off all the paint. And we don't want to leave it all rough. We're just going to do the edges. You can distress cross the front if you like that look, but that's not going to matter to me because, oops, you can't see that, because um, the cork will be in the way, so you won't be able to tell. Okay, so we have a little bit of distressing, eh, do a little more. There's some distressing there. And then you can get a tack cloth and wipe that off. And it looks like my tack cloth has walked away. So, we will just use this towel. Okay. So I'm not feeling any any gunk. Okay, so I have already went ahead and measured. I have a T, upside down T, and a T right there. And that tells me where to line up this piece of cork. So, as I said earlier, I got the cork off of Amazon. It came in a package like this. So, we're going to give it a try. Okay. So, yep, it'll work right there. A little dry fit. And as I said, they'll have extra room right here in case you have a dangling stud earring. Okay. So, I'm pulling this off. Cross my fingers. This all works out okay. <laughs> okay, so sticky sides on top. It's fairly sticky. We'll see how this works. So, in a few minutes, I'll show you the finished product. Okay, so here's a couple other ones that I finished. Here we have the cork one right here, the white hooks and the cork here. And I would suggest leaving that alone and not putting those earrings in right away. Um, it may need some time to cure. I think they suggest on the package 24 hours possibly. And then I have this one instead of doing cork. I drew an arrow and did some hand painting and then distressed it. And I'm also going to bless a friend with this. So if you have questions, feel free to comment below and I'd be happy to help you. But for now, thanks for watching and don't forget to like, subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.